Okay, um, the next topic is falling and lifting hazards. And we see here a nice picture of um, some workers doing maintenance job, cleaning the facade of a building. Um, so their safety must be ensured, so they must have proper harnesses to make sure that they don't fall. Okay. Do you want to? Do, do you want? Do, do you like the feeling of falling from high places? No. I know some people like it. Some people like bungee jumping, but when they do that, they want to make sure that they're safe, right? They're not going to. They, you don't die bungee jumping, do you? You don't, right? Yes. All right. So falling doesn't really make you die, but it's the landing part that. Uh, that is the uh, terrible part of falling, right? So, so it's not that the fall that kills you, it's that sudden stop okay, uh, that causes the impact to your body and uh, and you don't really, uh, you, you know what happens, right? And fall, falling is not only from high places, you can even fall just from walking or just being careless, uh, from slippery surfaces, for example, and uh, and it can be also not from so high. It can be falling from a ladder, or uh, I don't know, just falling off from your second floor balcony. So, so sometimes uh, it depends on uh, uh, how you fall that causes that different types of injuries. Um, so a fall, it can be fatal, especially if you hit your head first. Yeah, if you have head injuries, then it's fatal. And falls are actually a major cause of accidental death in the home and in the workplace. It's, um, uh, it's just unexpected, but it happens. Yeah. And the consequences of a fall depends on three major factors. One is the velocity of the initial impact. Uh, uh, and then secondly is the magnitude of deceleration upon impact. So once um, uh, you you fall, how you decelerate, uh, you, do you decelerate really fast or you have a slow deceleration um, would um, uh, would make you have different types of injuries. For example, if you fall on a soft cushion, so your deceleration is not so fast, and so it doesn't um, uh, impact so much. And then also the orientation of the body upon impact. How do you fall? Uh, is it head first, or is it your back first, or your legs? So it then it and then it, that uh, would um, cause different types of injuries. And um, so again, the velocity of the initial impact is uh, how fast are you being uh, flown away or falling uh, from uh, the initial impact. And if you remember the explosion, we, we talked about explosion. When there is an explosion, so the, 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 um, the force from the pressure wave or the blast wave is so strong so that, will cause, that is, uh, will cause you to fly uh, to be flown away in a very high velocity. So that high velocity um, would cause um, you to, uh, to be uh, injured. Now, what are the different causes of falls? You can fall due to foreign object on a walking surface. You, this is the typical uh, cartoon that we always see when you walk and then suddenly you step on um, a banana skin and then you fall off because it's slippery. Okay. So you have something um, on the floor and you don't see it or because it's just out of your view and it, it causes you to slip and fall. Or maybe it's, it, so not just a, a slippery, it can be uh, like a, a something hard, like maybe a metal pipe in the way and you just, didn't see it, and then you trip and you fall. Okay. 
Another cause of fall can be due to design flaw in walking surfaces. So some walking surfaces are just, uh, they can be uneven. So when it's uneven, they, they probably they are holes, potholes, and you don't see it and you, you stuck, your legs get stuck in it and you fall. Okay. Or, and then some um, floor coverings, they don't have that, uh, that traction. So it becomes slippery and you can fall or it has too much fraction, uh, traction. Uh, it's just not the, it's not a suitable kind of floor coverings for your shoes that it causes it to get stuck and you can fall. So that's design floor. And uh, the third cause of falls, and a lot of uh, falls is due to slippery surfaces. Uh, this is again due to poor choice of material when, uh, when you build a deflooring. And due to accidental spills, uh, suddenly there's uh, somebody spilled water or somebody spilled oil and it's not being uh, cleaned uh, quickly. Um, so you can fall. And poor housekeeping, you just. And the, uh, the fourth uh, cause of fall is the individual's impaired physical condition. Let's see, you are, uh, you are, uh, blind, okay, you're visually Im impaired or you're distracted, okay, and uh, maybe you, you have lack of awareness of um, the condition of that area and, and, and so on. All right, so falls, there are also different kinds of falls. Uh, so you may think, oh, it's, it, there's only one type of fall. So there are really a lot of different types of falls. And see here, I have four different types of fall. First of, uh, the first one is to trip and fall. So trip and fall is um, accidents that occur when a worker encounters an unseen foreign object in their path. You don't, you didn't see it, and then you trip on it and you fall. Okay. The second types of fall is you stomp and fall. So this is when you have your feet okay, or your foot suddenly meets a sticky surface. Or it gets stuck in a hole okay, uh, or a defect on the walking surface, it makes you stump and you fall. And then uh, the third kind of fall is you step and fall. This is when, uh, if this ever happened to you when you try to go downstairs and then you, it's like you forgot there's actually one more step to go and then you fall down fall down. Okay. So this occurs when a person's foot encounters an unexpected uh, step down or a hole in a, uh, on a floorboard that gives way. Okay. You, or uh, you're walking on uh, a walkway and you didn't you don't, you didn't expect it to have a step down and you fall because you lose your balance. Okay. So that is a step, a wrong step and you fall. And the other one is slip and fall. Slip and fall is when you lose your center of gravity. This is uh, especially when you are on a boat, and then uh, the boat is, uh, I mean, the, uh, maybe the, uh, the weather is, is not good. It's uh, uh, it's uh, wavy, and then you start to lose your balance, and then you just you fall off again. And this can also uh, be uh, caused by oily spot, and um, it just causes the food to shoot out from under the worker. Yeah, and you lose your balance and you fall. So you see, there are actually many different types of falls. So that's just not just one type of fall. There's another there's one, another Doctor. One. Okay. Yes, what is it? Falling in love. Haha. Ha. <laughs> that's hazardous also. <laughs> that's hazardous also. It distracts you. That is you. so hazardous. Uh, it kills. Mm. So many types of falls. <laughs> okay. Um, now, surface traction. So I mentioned this now about surface traction. It's the force that prevents an object such as wheel from sliding on a surface. Uh, so this is uh, very much related to the coefficient of friction. So you need to have that friction uh, in order for you to to stand stable and not fall. Like. Um, if you compare standing on your normal floor 
and standing on a sheet of ice. It's, it's, you need more balance on ice, right? Because you don't have that friction. So, so it's not just standing. Wheels also, uh, they, they don't grip on ice. Okay? So this is why it is, um, it is very dangerous uh, in, in cold places where they have uh, icy winter. It's very dangerous for cars because even though we think that the car wheels, the tires, they are rubber, they have, uh, they have all those, um, the lines, the traction, right? They're supposed to, uh, to provide friction, but they don't work on ice okay? because ice, uh, the coefficient of friction is very low it can be very slippery and very hazardous. And uh, one thing about ice, uh, how it's dangerous, not just because it's slippery, you don't see it. If you have ice on the floor, you don't really see the ice. So that is also, is, vi is by visual, it's dangerous. So normally this happens when, um, uh, when it rains in winter, and then suddenly uh, the, the temperature just suddenly drops. So the water that's on the, the road just freezes and becomes ice. So you, don't, you cannot see it. So cars can't move on it. You, you, your car can lose traction and slip off and um, get into an accident. Okay. So this is really interesting here yeah, because um, uh, I've 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 um, I've had this kind of fall many times um, during uh, icy icy season because it will feel like even though you're wearing boots, uh, thick winter boots with traction, and yet you still can slide off the road, especially if it's a uh, it's a um, a hilly road, and you will just um slide down the road um like a slide okay so that is dangerous okay especially because one time i was carrying my daughter and both of us uh just uh, we slid uh slip down the road like um like a slide on a playground that is dangerous imagine it's the middle of the road okay. all right Linoleum, uh, they can be slippery too, but they're not hazardous because it can provide the traction. Okay. And concrete is uh, has good traction. Um, you don't you don't slip on a concrete, but it hurts when you fall on a concrete. Right. Okay. Uh, strategies for preventing slips and falls. Uh, first of all. You have to choose the right surface material. You have to choose the highest possible coefficient of friction. So uh, contractors, when they decide on floorings, they must know these things. They must know the right tiles to use outdoor and what is the right tiles to use indoor. So not all floorings, uh, floor coverings are um, suitable anywhere. Like marble floors, you don't put marble floor outdoor in the rain, for example. Uh, it's not a good choice. They can be slippery. And then uh, another strategy is to retrofit an existing surface. If you already have it there, uh, try to place an enhancement, friction enhancement. For example, you put a carpet, and sometimes carpet can be slippery too. So you put those. Um, uh, those uh, like rubbery things underneath the carpet so that the, the carpets don't uh, skip. It's those skip trip strips. Uh, you also have those for chairs. Sometimes you can put it under chairs so that the chairs don't become so slippery. And then uh, put some grooves. If um, if a road is slippery, you can put some grooves so that it, it doesn't become uh, uh, so that it has some friction. And it's also important to always practice good housekeeping. If you see something spill, quickly clean it. Don't uh, expect the next person to do it because you're busy. So always keep 
the surface area clean and dry and clear from any um, uh, obstacles from anything in the way they okay? get it out and also while you're cleaning let's say while you're mopping and cleaning you have to put on signs warning signs it says that oh this is a slippery floor be careful uh walk slowly or just don't go here because it's free All right, um, and wear non-skid footwear. You uh, wear shoes with special non-skid soles so that uh, some are, um, uh, it, it gets stuck uh, so easily. And then also always do inspection of the surfaces. Uh, do this frequently because you never know there will, there will always be uh, hazards uh, on your walking surface such as you have um, screws lying around or you have some uh, parts of the staircase that's uh, uh, that's not properly fixed so that should be uh, fixed and make it stable they always inspect the area make the place safe all right um for people who work in high um uh, and, and high places such as uh, high-rise buildings. So this is, um, it, it's important for the workers to be protected from fall. It, it's just especially vital in this construction industry. And it is recommended that any employee working higher than six feet must be provided with fall protection. How high is six feet? Is six feet high? Tinggi. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Six feet? Yeah. One higher than one eighty. Higher than one eighty. It's not really high, right? But yeah, you still yeah. need to have full protection. Six feet is like going up on a ladder. Okay. Yeah. It's not really a high rise building. But yeah. they still need to be protected from fall. Okay, and this height limit is known as a trigger height. Um fall protection devices can be guardrails, you put guardrails so that people don't go off the edge. You can place a safety net at, on the ground so that if somebody falls, uh, the safety net can catch the person. Uh, to have a fall restraint system, a fall restraint system is like the body harness. You put on the harness so that you it restrains yourself from falling. And there are also fall arrest system and so on. There are many different types of fall protection devices. All right, fall protection. A fall arrest system is a system that will stop a worker's fall before the worker hits the ground below. Okay, um, so if you fall, it stops that person so that it doesn't hit the, uh, the floor, the ground. A fall restraint system is a system that restrains the movement of a worker so to a position the worker or to prevent the worker from moving to an edge. So because you're working at high places, um, you don't want the worker to go to go beyond the edge of the building, so you restrain that person with a harness. Um, uh, uh, you uh, uh, you tie it to uh, somewhere on a column, for example, something that doesn't move, so that he doesn't move too far and go off the edge. So it's, it restrains restrains his movement. And these systems, it can include a body harness. Sometimes it's a belt, a lanyard, a shovel, a lifeline, connecting devices, and anchorage. Okay. Uh, personal fall arrest system. These are examples of personal fall arrest system. So you have, like this person here, he has a body harness, and then uh, this is the, um, the lanyard uh, that connects him to an anchor point. So let's say this is uh, an anchor point, which is a beam above him. Uh, so it restricts its movement so that it doesn't, uh, sorry, this is an arrest system. It doesn't, it does not restrict its movement, but it stops him from hitting the ground. So if he falls off this beam, so this, it will arrest him from hitting the ground. It will just make him, um, uh, what do you call it, dangle there, uh, like, uh, like an a bungee jumping. So you have that lifeline on the anchorage. Okay. 
thing. So that is a personal fall arrest system. The personal fall restraint system is a system that controls your movement so that you don't go to the edge of uh, a building, for example. So it 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 restrains your um, uh, your movement. So this is an example of a, a fall or restraint system. So uh, you have an anchor point uh, and then lanyard is connected to anchor point so that you don't move away too far to the edge. Okay, okay so that's when we talk about uh, very uh, high buildings, high altitude. Um, but what about um, just around six feet high, like going up a ladder? So we we think that ladders um, is harmful, but it ladders has caused uh, has actually caused uh, not just death but also injuries because if you fall off the ladder, if you again if you land. At the wrong side of your body, you land on your head uh, or your spine. Okay, it can cause uh, disability and even death. Okay. So ladders, um, it presents unique opportunities for unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. Ladders are like they're like playgrounds. Um, kids, even at the playgrounds, they have uh, steps, just ladder-like steps. So people like to go on it, and then they they monkey around on the ladder, so those are unsafe acts. And then employees who use the ladders must be trained in proper selection, inspection, and use of the storage. Okay, so they they're not they they are harmful. You have to know how to use it properly. You have to you have to inspect the ladder before you can use it. So things like uh, missing parts or broken parts of a, of a ladder, you have to make sure that all the ladders are stable, there, there are no bro broken parts because you don't want to, to, um, to fall off a ladder. And then uh, it's also hazardous if you use a ladder with a too low weight rating. Let's say you are um, a bit overweight. Okay and that ladder has a weight rating and you uh, your weight uh, exceeds the weight rating so it can cause the ladder to break and you fall and and one more is to use the ladder it's just too short for the purpose you know that there are many different types of length for ladders if you use a ladder that's too short uh, and it's uh, it's not is the, not the right height, that's also dangerous because sometimes what people tend to do when you have a ladder that's short, they tend to put it somewhere else. Let's say they tend to put that ladder on a table. So that's that's not right. And you're not supposed to do that. And then you use uh, uh, metal ladders. A lot of ladders are metal. Most ladders are metal. And then you use it near energized electrical equipment. It can, uh, because it's a conductor, it can um, conduct electricity, so that's dangerous. And then uh, another hazard from ladder is objects falling from ladders. Let's say you climb up a ladders and you carry a lot of things with you. You want to fix a light bulb, uh, but with you, you have a, a new light bulb in your hand. You have a screwdriver and then God knows you want to bring so many different things. You want to bring tapes and other things with you, uh, there's a tendency that you drop them and if there's people underneath the ladder, uh, so that's a falling object, has it? Okay, um, so before using a ladder, you have to inspect before each use. Every time you need to use the ladder, you have to inspect the ladder. Make sure the ladder is clean, free of oil, free of grease, no dirt, making sure that they're not slippery and then check all the fittings are they tight um, the spreaders or the locking device of that ladder must be in place because if it's not locked that ladder can 
can disclose by itself and uh, you lose balance and fall off. Okay. And um, non-skid safety feet must be in place. Okay. So the the ladder will have a non-skid uh, feet at the bottom. They should be in place. And then there shouldn't be any structural defects. So all the support braces are intact. And then you also must make sure that we want to use the ladder. You place it on an even surface. So don't put a ladder on staircase, for example. Okay, don't put a ladder on uh, on a surface that's uh, it's not even. So it 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 you don't have that balance for that ladder. So ladder, um, I've seen ladder accidents. It it happens. Uh, and it's dangerous. Okay, and when you have letters, it's only, it's meant for one person only. You don't go on a letter with more than one person. And then when you have all those tools that you want to carry with you, use a tool belt okay, or land lines, uh, hand lines to carry the object so that you, your, so that your hands, at least one of your hand is free it, uh, because you have everything on your belt and then when you're on a ladder you suppose your body is supposed to be straight don't go leaning out from the ladder in any direction either in the in the right to the right or to the left okay you're supposed to just stand on the ladder and have your body straight okay if you want to fix a light bulb which is on your right, you move the ladder to the light bulb. Okay, don't don't put your ladder here. And just because you're lazy to move your ladder, you you just try to reach that light bulb from this ladder. Okay, so that's wrong because you can lose balance and fall off. And if you have a fear of heights, just don't climb a ladder. Just don't go uh, do all these uh, hazardous uh, things that uh, has to do with heights. And then when you are using a ladder, make sure you don't have anybody walking around under the ladder because it's always hazard of things falling off. Okay, so the setup of a ladder, especially this kind of the this uh, kind of ladder where it, you have a uh, what do you call it, a single ladder, not the one that you open up, okay, like a like a pyramid kind of ladder. So this is a, a specific uh, setup of how to put a ladder. You have to make sure that it is at the right incline. Okay. And uh, you have to make sure that you put it on a slippery level surface. The surface has been level. And then when you extend that ladder, um, at the, the top of the support must extend about three to four feet okay, from the support. Okay, if uh, if you do use this access roof or the elevator surface, and then anchor or secure the top of the ladder when you you don't have this uh, three to four feet extension. Okay, if it's not possible for you to have that, make sure that's securely uh, anchored, and then place the ladder base a quarter the height of the ladder from the wall. So it's, it should be a quarter of that height from the wall when using a straight ladder. Okay. So uh, so this is uh, what I mentioned just now. You put a ladder uh, in, on this spot, for example, and then, okay, so what's, what's wrong with this picture here based on what I described just now? Two people in one ladder. One ladder. Yes. Two of them on the ladder and not even what surface is angle. Is it not is uh uneven surface? I think the surface looks okay. Mm. I guess maybe. And then they're both leaning to the left of the ladder. Oh. So that's wrong. They should have just moved the ladder to where they want to do the work. Okay, and not lean like that. So two person on the ladder is already bad, and then they're both leaning at one side. You know that it, this this will the whole thing will fall off, right? But it's a good thing that uh, they have their belt on, and and also you can see that um, it's bad that there's there's two of them on it, and if 
and they're uh, I can say that this person is a bit overweight. It's probably has exceeded the limit of the weight rating of this ladder. Okay. So, so many, uh, there's so many mistakes that these two guys are doing there. Uh, so don't do it. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, look at some um, uh, silly, silly uh, pictures of people on letters. So would you do that? So, creative, Dr. No. Saman. <laughs> yeah, creative. It's creative? Uh, yeah, I guess, but they're, it's too risky. This doesn't even look stable. And if you, so he needs to have harness. This is too high. The ladder doesn't look stable. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, this, this is when I said just now, when the ladder is too short, for the job and then you put it on something else. Well, I said just now maybe to put it on a table. At least table is stable. This to put on a case digger. This is moving. It, it's it's not uh, it's not stable. So I don't know how these guys um, and there's two of them on that ladder. So that's um, silly. And it's a definite no-no to put a ladder in a pool of water. Like he's putting that on a swimming pool and that ladder is metal and he is working on, uh, I don't know, he's probably fixing a light um, uh, or fixing some electrical cable. So he can get electrocuted. And, um, um, really know what he's trying to do. He's changing the light bulb uh, using this ladder and then putting all of these that looks like bamboo sticks to stabilize the ladder. And what's bad is it is on a truck and that truck can move. And, I mean trucks, they're not stable, right? It, it can't move. So he's risking his life. Would you do that? No. Okay. No, that's wrong. Okay. And I don't know what these guys are trying to do. Um. It's probably trying to. I don't know. Put a poster on on that. Uh, this is maybe it. It looks like it's just a second second floor of a building, but it's already it's high enough okay, to to create injuries so people can can die okay uh, falling from this height and this one changing a light bulb on uh, a ladder that's not uh tall enough not high enough and it's on a truck that can move so those are unsafe acts of using ladders any questions? Any comments? No, doctor. No, doctor. <laughs>